Hello everyone, this is Durga from ITVarsity. In this video, I will walk you through the details about Generative AI features of Google Colab. To get started, you have to go to collab.research.google.com. If you don't have account, you have to sign up and then you should be able to log in using your account. You can use your Gmail account uh, or any other account to get started with Google Colab. Now let's dive in with respect to generative AI features of Google Colab. But before getting into those details, let's also understand what Google Colab is. Then we'll actually look into generative AI features of Google Colab. If you are a Python developer, you might have come across something called as notebook environment. Google Colab is nothing but a browser-based notebook environment managed by Google itself. It have different runtimes. You should be able to use different runtimes and run your notebooks without any issues. It supports not only Python but also all the other features a typical notebook environment supports. To get started with notebook, you just have to go to File and then click on New Notebook in Drive. You can see it have created a notebook. The original name was untitled 0.ipyb. I have changed it to getting started with Gen AI features of Google Colab. Once you start, you see there is saying start coding or generate with AI. If you don't see this, then you have to enable generative AI features. You will also see something like this at the bottom. If generative AI features are enabled in your Colab environment. Actually, when you get started, it will ask you to confirm whether you wanted to use generative AI features or not. By mistake, if you miss that, you might not see these things. First, let us understand how to enable generative AI features, then I'll take it further. Typically, when you start with Google Colab, the generative AI features will automatically be enabled. However, if they are not enabled, then you need to go to settings and you have to take care of enabling the required features. If the Gen AI features are not enabled, you will not be able to see these. Uh, here you can see it is saying start coding or generate with AI and also you can see this icon. If you click on this, you can see chart based interface. In case if the settings are not properly configured, you might not be able to see these things. Even if you are able to see, you might not be able to use this. Let me actually walk you through the details about the settings and then I'll take it forward. To go to the settings, you have to go to tools and then click on settings. Uh, then you have to go to AI assistance. Here you can see there are three settings. One is show AI powered inline completions. Second one is consented to use generative AI features. Third one is hide generative AI features. Now, if you enable this, and then disable these two, then the interface will be like this. You will not be able to use Generative AI features of Google Colab. In 2025 and later, using Generative AI for coding is very, very important. We'll actually get into the details about uh, the code completion, code generation, and also code review. Along with those, we'll also see how to troubleshoot the issues using Google Colab when you run the code. Those will be covered in a moment. That being said, to enable you have to go to tools, then settings, then go to AI assistance, then make sure this is disabled and these two are enabled. Once your settings are like this, you should be able to use generative AI features of Google Colab without any issues. Now let us start with our first code snippet. It is nothing but print hello world. The default programming language is nothing but uh, Python only. Hence, when you run this, it will spin up the runtime and then you should be able to run the code and you will see the result in a moment. You can see it is saying hello world. In case if you are curious about the runtime, you can go to runtime and then you can click on change runtime type. You can see there are different hardware accelerators and also uh, different programming languages such as Python 3, R, Julia, etc. Uh, here, uh, when it comes to hardware accelerator, it can be CPU, it can be T4 GPU, uh, it also supports V5 E-1 TPU. Also, there are premium versions, you can actually purchase additional compute units and then you can take it forward. Now, let us develop our first function using the generative AI features of Google Colab. For that, I am clicking on generate here. You can see it have opened this pop-up where we can actually give the prompt and it will generate the code. The code will be generated in this cell. So here I am saying, please generate a list 
with different elements of type numbers strings and also none let's see what it will actually uh, come up with then we'll take it forward now you see it have come up with uh, a piece of code it is saying my list equal to 1 hello 3.14 none world and 100 now we should be able to run this and you can see the outcome as per the expectations now on top of this i just wanted to get number of elements by each type for that you should be able to again use the generative ai feature by clicking on this now please come up with the logic which will create a dict with type and corresponding count let's see whether it will be able to come up with the code or not now again you can see it have generated the code let's click on accept and you can see the logic here now let's run this and you can see the details here there are two integer types two string types one float type and one none type you can see here the two integer types are nothing but one and hundred the two string types are nothing but hello and world and then we have one float type which is nothing but 3.14 and then one none type the result is as per the expectations this is how you should be able to generate the code using generative ai features of google code the code is generated as per the expectations however you might want to understand the code if someone can explain you the code you will be able to understand better right to get explanation of the code you just have to click on these three dots and then click on explain code and you can see it is coming up with the explanation you should be able to go through the details and understand what is going on here it is saying this code iterates through the my underscore list checks the data type of each item and counts the occurrences of each type in a dictionary called type underscore counts finally it prints a type underscore counts dictionary so this is how you should be able to get the explanation you can uh, ask more doubts about this and get clarifications you can just interact with this interface and you should be able to clarify all your doubts without any issues so at any point in time if you need explanation of the code that is generated you just go to that cell click on these three dots and then click on explain code you are good to go one of the challenging task for any developer is troubleshooting the code troubleshooting your own code is one thing troubleshooting others code is a nightmare uh, however google collab uh, generative ai features can streamline the process of troubleshooting as well it have inherent capabilities of troubleshooting the issues for example let's say here i wanted to get the sum of integers let me write the code so here i am saying total equal to zero and then i am saying for item in my underscore list total plus equal to item print total in this case i have developed the code and if you observe as i type the code it is actually auto completing it is called as code completion earlier by using the prompt we are able to generate the code uh, whatever you are seeing here is nothing but code completion let me again say for you can see it is automatically showing the code it is nothing but code completion now let me clean up these things and let me run this most likely it will fail you can see it is uh, throwing type error unsupported operand types for plus int and str because we have integer as well as string types in the list and as we are attempting to add strings to integers it is complaining however you don't need to go to the code and attempt to understand you can just click on explain error it will not only explain the error it will also come up with the fix you can see it is saying the error in the selected cell is a type error because you are trying to add a string to an integer i'll modify the code to only add the numerical elements from the list now you should be able to click on accept and then you can see the logic here it is attempting to 
check whether item is integer or float or not only if the items are either integer type or float type those items are being added to total otherwise they are being ignored now let's run this you can see the outcome by adding 1 3.14 and 100 it is able to get 104.14 this is how you should be able to troubleshoot issues using generative ai features of google collab so in this video we have gone through the details about how to get started with google collab how to ensure generative ai features of google collab are enabled and also how to use generative ai features of google collab for code completion code generation code review or getting explanation of the code and also troubleshooting the coding issues using the generative ai features of google collab you can definitely improve your software engineering capabilities make sure you spend some time in understanding this tool especially if you want to learn ai and then you can take it forward at it university we actually take care of ai trainings in case if you are interested to sign up to any of our ai programs make sure to look at the description there will be a form you can fill the form and then you can take it forward also if you like the content make sure to click on the like button make sure to subscribe to our channel to get free content like this in case if you would like to leave any feedback feel free to use the comment section and we'll take it further